Hello everyone, it is Grace and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now I'm doing a video that actually is very requested. It was quite a last minute thing. I actually had a comment asking me to do this and make it into a series. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So basically, today I'm going to be talking about my style and my style journey. Like how I sort of developed the way I dress and just my aesthetic I guess. Because I feel like in this day and age, like on TikTok, everyone is trying to find their aesthetic like you have so many different ones like y2k like some people dress like really 2000 some people dress quite alternative some people dress basic which i think i am i don't think i have that different of a style to a lot of people like i just think i'm fit 500 <laughs> i'm gonna do two parts i think so this part one is basically gonna be like my timeline of life of my fashion and what i've worn over the years and just how I sort of developed my style and was inspired by different things. Let me know what you like to see in the part two. I would grab yourself a tea because I talk for England and let's just get on with it. So I'm going to start with birth. <laughs> if fashion is inherited from parents, which I don't think it is because I feel like it's just you just wear what you want to wear. My love of fashion, I did not get from my dad. Some of the stuff he orders, me and my mum are just like, what is that? He does have quite questionable fashion sense. She, my mum is very stylish, I think. She worked in Selfridges, and I feel like she just knows all the trends. Even though she's in her 40s, not that's old, but she still really likes keeping up with trends and staying in fashion. She loves Zara, like, just as much as me. I probably got the Zara obsession from my mum he definitely did because we both order about 20 parcels a week from zara <laughs> it's really bad maybe my love of like luxury fashion as well from my mum because obviously she works in selfridges but yeah my mum is very stylish i think and i always seek her approval like say i buy something or i'm in zara with her and i'm like mum she has the last say on what i buy basically because i really trust her opinion the only thing i would say i've probably got from my dad is i love classic investment pieces because my dad's always encouraging me to buy stuff that won't date. So, for example, when I bought my trench coat, he was pretty much the reason why I bought it because he was like, Grace, that won't date. You'll have that for life. It's a piece in your wardrobe that you'll have forever. So I guess I kind of get that from him. I guess I get that from him, but definitely style-wise and Zara-wise and just interesting fashion-wise, I think I get that from my mum. If it's inherited. It might not even be inherited, but yeah. That's the background. I think my mum really loved dressing me up as well, but I can't obviously remember what I wore as a baby, so she probably put me in really cute little baby grows and stuff, but I'm not going to remember them. I think I remember up until about the age of five. So I sort of remember this picture kind of being taken. I reckon I was about four or five in this picture. It's just like the stereotypical girl picture, isn't it? Like girly five-year-old, like princess room, princess dress. Everything inside is pink. You can't really get much more of a girly girl. That was another, I didn't grow out of Barbies till like I was like 10. I'm not even joking. <laughs> it's quite embarrassing. But I used to love Barbies, like doll houses. I was obsessed with basically everything girly. Obviously, I didn't have my own style at this point because I was five. But I'm just saying like I was always... I was never a tomboy, basically. I was always quite a girly girl. About 2007... I was five, so I'd say maybe like 2008, 2009 was when High School Musical came out. Now, can I just say, Sharpay basically raised me. Like, I used to be such a bossy child. I think I just was obsessed with Sharpay's character at the age of like five, six, I'd say. I do sort of feel like that impacted my style because obviously I loved pink. I loved Sharpay. I just loved her lifestyle. I sort of not only picked up on her style, <laughs> but her personality traits. So, you know she had a dog called Boy, this Yorkshire Terrier. I was obsessed with little miniature Yorkies. I really wanted one, and I remember crying because my friend got one. <laughs> I was so upset because I really wanted this miniature Yorkie that Sharpay had. Mum bought me a stuffed Yorkshire Terrier, just like this little toy, about this big, I want to say. And... <laughs> I made my own club up on the bus. This has got nothing to do with fashion, but I just thought it was quite funny and showed you how much Sharpay like influenced my life. I named this little dog boy. I used to get on the bus and I'd have my own club. And <laughs> this is so embarrassing. So I would make this book. You know, like when you're in school, you have to take home a stuffed animal and write about it. <laughs> well, 
I did that, but I did it on my own accord. So I'd be on the bus and I'd be like, right, it's your turn to take boy home. You can write about your weekend with him and put it in the book and take a picture and print it off and put it in the book. Like the parents must have just thought I was some sort of psycho bossy child. I was a proper bossy boots. And it's weird because I was so confident in primary school and then it just all went down. Like now I'm actually quite a shy person. Sharpay, I'd say, was my first icon. Then I became obsessed with Hannah Montana. And let me tell you, even to this day, like, if I had all the money in the world, I would show someone a picture of Hannah Montana's wardrobe that just, where everything slides out and it's a secret one. She opens it and it's all closed and there's like this massive walk-in wardrobe. If I had all the money in the world, I'd still show someone a picture of that and get them to make it for me because that wardrobe... <laughs> has never left my mind like I'm sorry Hannah Montana's wardrobe is the best I've ever seen in my life I was just obsessed with it like I wanted all the sparkly dresses she wore I wanted to be like this country girl <laughs> for some reason um who like sings with her dad on a guitar I started guitar lessons because Hannah Montana didn't really go very far I feel like that era was just sequins like I was obsessed with sequins I feel like they were on everything I'm gonna try and as I'm talking about this put pictures around of who's ringing me i'm gonna like try and find as many pictures as i can of just me as a child around and i just wanted to be hannah montana like i thought i could sing i do performances in like these sequin dresses i just basically thought i was her when i really wasn't i remember having these um sparkly boots they were purple sparkly but when i say purple i mean like bright purple i'm gonna try and find a picture of them because they were quite iconic um with pink studs on them like bright pink studs on them they were like this they were like the classic like 2008 style boot like maybe like up to here and like sparkly and then the heel was like i'm gonna try and find a picture of them but they were so 2000s it all went downhill from hannah montana because i remember she went crazy like she went a bit alternative and she did i can't be tamed and then she cut all her hair off and started going crazy on wrecking balls and stuff and yeah that sort of ruined it a little bit for me as a child because i was like oh where's my country girl gone do you know what i mean <laughs> but miley needed to do her and that's all good like childhood wise hannah montana sharpay created me a few things i remember as a child me wearing maybe fashion wise would have been um on my 10th birthday i had this like petty skirt they were really trendy when i was like a child they were like these massive skirts that looked like cupcakes oh my god how could i forget i was obsessed with toddlers and tiaras like i was obsessed with it so when i saw these petty skirts i was like oh my god i'm gonna look like a pageant girl here is a picture of me in it it's bright pink and i wore it like with a cute black puffy sleeve top it was, it was just such an iconic look for me as a child like I'll never forget that outfit on my 10th birthday and had a cupcake party. I do sort of feel like as a child you're still gravitated towards things that you're going to like when you're older. Because even though your mum dresses you and stuff, you do still go in shops and be like, oh I like that, I like that. Maybe when you're like 10. So you do sort of have some sort of style when you're 10. When I was about 12, I didn't really know what to wear. Because I feel like 12 is such a weird age because you can't fit in kids clothes but then you also can't really fit in adults clothes. So it's like, what do you wear? I would just wear Topshop Journey jeans. <laughs> and I just wear it with high neck top, like a classic year seven outfit and i'd wear that every weekend it was just my go-to an easy thing to put on roll neck and jeans easy and i think i became friends with grace we used to like kawaii so we used to like those squishy things you know squishy cakes and stuff and we used to like just really girly things like you know like kawaii how like japanese girls dress that was for like a couple of months and then we went to our like vintage phase and we used to go vintage shopping together and it was gabby d martino that got us into all of that like we loved her style we loved her like vintage vlogs where she'd go vintage shopping we used to love like little teacup parties and all vintage things like we used to go charity shops like every weekend and shop and this is when we started our youtube channel and ariana grande as well i remember she had this lipsy collection come out and i ordered so many dresses from them this was again when i was doing youtube so you can still watch that now that video i was obsessed with ariana grande i loved her like 
50s style you know like when she used to wear the half up half down the cute skirts the little um court heels I feel like that sort of inspired a lot of my style i would just sort of want to dress like her but i feel like when you're 13 you don't really have the confidence to wear you don't have the confidence to wear stuff like that so i sort of just did it subtly and then when i was 14 i want to say maybe 13 14 i started watching gossip girl which changed it all well obviously it didn't change it all but like I feel like this was defining for my style because I realised how I wanted to dress basically at this point. But I started to wear like, um, you know those sort of pussy bow blouses? The ones that are like blouses with bows. I'd say around about then I started to shop in Zara properly. I was still doing YouTube so you can probably go back and watch the sort of thing I wear when I was 14, 13. But that was when I started this channel actually. So if you go back, that was then. I just was obsessed with Gossip Girl. And you can watch like my Gossip Girl tag and all that on my channel. Like I was obsessed with it. When a girl first watches Gossip Girl, it's life changing. <laughs> Literally. Like I feel like you either love it or you just don't vibe with it. But if you vibe with it, you vibe with it on another level. Like you literally will want to be in Gossip Girl. Like you'll just want it to be your life. Then when I was about 15, my love of like cream and like the 90s, like the colour cream was just my favourite. I found this Versace dress in... Um, a vintage shop in London and I just was like oh my god this is just me in a, in a look I started to really like just simple cream and white and monotone outfits but I still also used to like the gossip girl style and I was like you know what this is the sort of thing I want to wear like golden cream and those sort of colours like really glamorous and classy I know and I also started to like tweed sets as well that was when tweed sets became fashionable so the gossip girl style was just elevated this pink outfit was just too iconic oh my god and then i actually wore this outfit when i was sat in front of blake lively when i was 15 i sat in front of blake lively at a premiere like she was in this movie called the simple a simple favor that's it me and grace got there really early so we was in the front row of this really small cinema room and Blake Lively, I kid you not, was probably sat a metre away from me. And I couldn't get a picture with her because it wasn't like that at all. I spoke about the movie, but I was just in awe of being sat in front of Serena Van Der Woodson. Do you know what I mean? I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> That's not got anything to do with this style thing, but I've probably watched it about four times full through since I watched it for the first time because I just feel like you can never watch it too many times. Like, it never gets old. And it also really inspires me for winter fashion as well. I know it sounds weird, but I love the Thanksgiving and Christmas episodes. They're the best. So I always watch it this time of year because it just makes me feel really festive. So then I'd say 16. It's not really changed since when I was 16. I started doing Zara hauls, like, nearly every week when I was 16. And I just basically started shopping there for every single thing. It's not really changed much since last year. I feel like I left school and I found my style and I've not really changed it a lot. I do think I dress a bit too old for my age, but I just feel like I like 90s inspired fashion, like, and Gossip Girl obviously inspired, but mainly 90s, like the blazers, cream again, one of my favourite colours. I'd say my colour palette is black white cream and pink i'd say probably to describe one word myself it would be classic and let me know what you'd like to see in part two because i can literally include anything i hope you all enjoyed and i'll see you next time bye